welcome everyone. Uh, so we've now got eight retail innovation pitches and we're going to kick off with Morton from Sam Labs. Thank you very much. Let me jump ahead. Perfect. Good morning. Uh, my name is Morton from Sam Labs. Did you know that 65% of the jobs that our kids will be doing in the future don't even exist today? And in a world that's changing that quickly and is that unpredictable, how can we inspire and empower children today and prepare them for the jobs of tomorrow? Well, at Sam Labs, we believe that the best way of doing that is by tapping into the thing that kids love the most, which is playing. And that's why we created Sam. Sam is a smart construction kit made up of small wireless building blocks, kind of like Lego from the future, and intuitive gamified apps that allow you to start programming and building and creating instantly. These apps take you through different challenges, different adventures, and different projects that teach you essential 21st century skills, like problem solving, analytical thinking, creativity, and many, many more. I'm going to give you a short demo to show you how this works. Uh, and a very wise man told me never to do a live demo on stage, especially if it's not being projected up there. But I think it's essential for you to realize how innovative and how easy it is to use Sam. So what I've got here in my hand is a small button and a small LED. And I'm going to connect these within a few seconds, completely wirelessly, using my app on my iPad here. So on my app, you see this is what's called the Sam Space app. And when I turn on my button and my light, a small red light turns on on the side of them. And that means they're on and they're active. And if you can see it, it's very small, but they're immediately available on the top left of my screen. If I want to start programming these, all I need to do is simply drag them onto the canvas, like so. And you see that they change color on the block as well. And that tells me what's connected to what. And if I want that button to connect to light, I don't need to draw any wires. I don't need to do any soldering. I don't even need to write any code. All I have to do is simply connect the dots on the screen. And you can see that both of these two blocks turn green. And I'm sure you can imagine what happens when I press the button the light turns on instantly. And that's how easy it is to start building your own wireless connections. Now, of course, a button and a light is not the most exciting uh, project. It's not really a toy. But you can take that same simple concept and you can start building much cooler things. So on my table here, uh, down in the front, I don't know if you can see it properly, but I built a little race car. And this race car is controlled by my slide in my hand here. And if I move my slider across, I should. There we go. That's the, that's the curse of a live demo, right? So that should be moving the car as well. The uh, problem is when I've got so many different connections going on, jumping between devices can be a bit iffy. Uh, but that would then normally drive around. So to illustrate that, it basically you take these blocks and you start building them into context. You can build Lego creations, add a bit of technology, and you bring those inventions to life. And through that playing, through that experimenting and inventing, kids are then learning these skills. And why are we doing this? Well, and there we go. Just a bit of a delayed reaction. <laughs> Um, you see that the sound can become a really fun way for kids to learn these skills. And why are we doing this? Well, we want kids to be empowered, as I mentioned. We need to change engineering from, going, from improving the speed of a train by one kilometer an hour into disruptive change. I want the kids that are playing with Sam today to be up on this stage in 15 years' time telling you guys about the crazy inventions they've come up with. And that only comes by giving them the tools, the skills, and the inspiration of what they can build and what they can create. Unfortunately, I haven't, I haven't got enough time to show you some of the really amazing projects that kids are building. But if you check out our website, you can see all the different ideas and all the different things that they're creating. And it's truly astonishing what an eight-year-old can build when you give them the right tools and the right skills. Thank you very much. And if you're interested in finding out more, we have a stand uh, over in the startup section. You can come and get hands-on. It's a truly amazing experience when you actually get to try it. Uh, and of course, we do have our kits available as well. It's a great Christmas present. Um, and we're doing a special discount here at the event as well. Thank you very much. Any questions at all? Are there any questions that people normally ask? Anything that you can? Uh, usually, this yeah, question about how it works. Uh, so everything is completely Bluetooth enabled. Uh, so you connect to the device, uh, and that's we do all the programming. And as long as the app is running, then you got all the uh, the projects working. Uh, we've got 15 different blocks, so it's a complete uh, repertoire portfolio of different uh, ins and inputs and outputs you can do. Uh, you can also connect these to the internet as well. So say if I wanted that car to be powered by Twitter, uh, I could also do that as well. Just as easy as I connect to the button as the input, I could say connect social media into my inventions as well. And then you start having a whole internet of things world around you as well. Amazing. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much.
morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Amy Rep. Uh, I work for a company called Donuts that does not sell donuts. Um, but I am here today to talk to you about um, some new branding opportunities that exist in today's not-com world. So I'm sure this is a conundrum that's familiar to lots of you. You come up with a fantastic idea for a brand name or a product. You go to the web to go to register a domain name to get the website, and then you find that everything you want is gone, or it's extortionately priced on the secondary market. So you end up compromising on your brand or product name and end up with something either really overpriced that you resent having had to pay for, or long, or unpronounceable, or maybe, maybe even unspellable. But what if there was a way to change all of that? What if there was a way to get a web presence that immediately said who you are and what you do and matched your brand or product name and didn't cost an absolute fortune? Well, that solution is here and that solution is a not-com domain. So for those of you who haven't heard of not-coms, they are um, alternatives to uh, the traditional .com or .co.uk extensions with which you're probably familiar. Um, they launched in 2014 and have been growing rapidly in popularity ever since. Uh, with over 27 million sold to date, um, that means there's one every 10 seconds. And they offer alternatives that are descriptive, such as .agency, .media, .digital, .marketing, and photography, .photography, to finish off your URL. So why exactly have they been so popular? Well, I think the key reason they have been, it can be attributed to the nine factors here, which also correspond to shifts in consumer behavior and internet usage toward globalization, personalization, and mobile. So firstly, not good short not-com domain names are available and at a reasonable price because they're brand new. Um, because they're meaningful and descriptive, they say immediately who you are and what you do, which can help build consumer trust and credibility. Um, additionally, because they are short and meaningful, they're memorable. Um, so when you're, especially when you're trying to convert from offline to online marketing efforts, or really, you know, build a brand reputation around a product that nobody's ever heard of, that's incredibly helpful. Um, and finally, as a result of being short, meaningful, and memorable, they're also mobile friendly. Um, so that brings us to the SEO question. Um, I know, obviously, you all know that mobile friendliness is now a key Google ranking factor. And SEO friendliness is probably one of the first questions that people always ask me about not comms. It's an incredibly important um, thing to think about. Um, well, Google has gone on the record saying that not comms are not treated any differently from dot coms when it comes to determining your search ranking. So there's no negative implications. Um, and some independent studies from Globerunner and Search Metrics have actually suggested that they could provide a rankings boost. Um, additional studies have also suggested that you can save money on online advertising efforts um, because you can convert your efforts at a lower rate. And finally, unlike a lot of alternative popular uh, two-letter names which really set you out as a startup, um, they're also offering a global and secure platform on which to build a global business. So you're probably wondering why I know so much about all of this, which seems like kind of a niche topic. Um, it's because Donuts, the company I work for, offers approximately 200 of the 600 new not-com domain extensions that are currently available for purchase, everything from .agency to .zone. Uh, we were launched with over $100 million in funding from some incredibly prestigious investors, and we operate as a wholesaler or a registry alongside such other companies as Google, uh, which operates .app, <coughs> WordPress, which operates .blog, and Amazon. Um, so really a prestigious group of companies doing this. Um, all of our domain names are available via the traditional uh, retail registrar channel, with which you may be familiar, the consumer-facing ones like GoDaddy and 123Reg. Um, there are also a lot of, of companies that sit behind and power the small uh, web hosting companies that many of you may be using. Um, although the majority of our customers are small businesses and startups who have taken advantage of these new names, we do have some high-profile adopters. Kanye West, Lady Gaga, um, you know, the, and also some of the, uh, the exhibitors here, Work.Life and Pulp.Wine, which I noticed, which is fantastic to see here at Unbound. Um, and they've all taken advantage of these uh, brand new names, and um, we're using them in really interesting and innovative ways, um, core websites, microsites, social media redirects, et cetera. 
Um, so you're probably wondering how this can all benefit you, this whole NotCom revolution. Um, firstly, you can obtain NotCom domain names for yourself or for your customers. Um, you know, they're a great way to launch a marketing campaign, product launch, or even as a rebrand. Um, and, you know, in most cases, it's really easy just to go to one of those registrars that I mentioned earlier and buy the names directly. Um, but, you know, if you're looking for a little bit of advice or, you know, need some suggestions, feel free to come and speak to me today directly. Um, or also, if you think you might be interested in um, some of the sort of special premium um, names that we have never made available to the public, things like advertising.agency or digital.camera that really do offer an unparalleled branding opportunity um, and a way to launch a campaign. Additionally, we also offer partnerships to people who may be um, able to, wanting to acquire a, a large selection of domains uh, for themselves or their clients, or, and we offer the opportunity to potentially earn discounts or commissions on the sales. Um, so I don't want to just, you know, have you take our word for it. Um, I want to, um, you know, let you watch a little video about um, how fantastic these NotCom domains are, um, straight from the mouth of one of our real-life NotCom entrepreneurs. And I'm hoping if I click next, the video will start playing. There are hundreds of ways you can tie a piece of fabric. I envision women walking down the street with these gorgeous headpieces and just feeling really beautiful. The website is most of our business. It's all of our business. I knew that I wanted life in the name because it would need to be sold as a lifestyle brand. After changing to a dot life, we doubled the sales of the previous 10 months in two months' time. Our domain is different. Our product is different. All those things tell a really unique story that our customers love. Um, so thank you very much for your time. I think I've probably gone a little bit over, but um, I can either take some quick questions or else I'll be at the booth. Um, we're just over that way. And if you wanted to discuss in further detail about you know, any of the names that we offer or also partnership opportunities. Thank you. Hello, my name is Max and I'm from CarSpring. We are an online platform for used cars. So effectively, we're a one-stop shop where you can buy everything around your car. So first of all, your car, and then your car and everything you need throughout the life cycle. I think the, um, the, the idea behind it is pretty simple. We're trying to bring back the good old you know, one-stop shop experience from 30 years ago, where you would walk into a dealership. They would you know, consult you on what car to buy, then on what configuration to get, help you with you know, the uh, payment terms, you know, do you want to cash buy, finance, leasing, um, you know, what is the after sales plan that comes with it, um, and then tell you when, you know, when you can pick up your, your old car, uh, your new car. And you know, due to the internet that got shredded into pieces, nowadays everyone searches online, then you want to buy on finance, you have to go onto another aggregator to find the best loan available, then you have to get your insurance, and, you know, then you have to find the find the car at the right price, go there, hope that everything works out so you can buy it. And then you've only you know, managed to get the car, you're far from having sorted out the, the life cycle or the services and so forth that come, come along with it. And our idea was to bring all of that together. So we're trying to be effectively the spider in the web where we aggregate, the, you know, we work with supply partners, so leasing companies, dealers and auction houses to bring, to, to basically have access to a wide range of supply. Um, we work with, with lenders, so you have, um, as a consumer, a representative panel to, to find, um, depending on your credit score, the best available lending product, um, as well as then insurance products and, and maintenance products to, uh, yeah, to help you within the life cycle. And the, the aim is that we combine all of this in, into a very convenient approach, so you can do everything online in one session. You know, you know what is the, the terms that we can offer you on finance, and then you know you can decide if you want to go ahead further, and what you want to configure it um, into the service going forward. Yeah, that's that's really it. Is there any questions from anyone? Okay, then yeah, check out the website, visit our, our booth, and. Um, Happy to give you some more fun stories later. Thank you. Bye.
So there's been a quick switch round, so that was Car Spring, and now we've got Primo Toys. Oh, okay. Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Filippo Jacob. I'm the co founder and CEO of Primo Toys. And we are on a mission uh, to build the best educational toy company in the world, which makes things very simple. We do this, we started doing this by creating a toy that introduces coding to children at ages uh, three to six, so early years. And uh, we would like to create a global standard in early learning uh, and coding um, for uh, around the world. Now, we believe that programming is a new 21st century skills that should be taught alongside um, other literacies like reading and arithmetic, but that really doesn't happen yet. And that was a question I asked myself when I became a dad. Um, I started looking around at uh, coding uh, systems for uh, early years, and I kind of realized that most of them are actually for all the children. There are some brilliant, brilliant products, but they require tablets, they require literacy skills, they require dexterity that children uh, don't already have, and so are not suitable uh, for the introduction of coding in uh, pre-literate years. Uh, so I wanted to create a coding system uh, that sort of packed all of those uh, um, programming uh, concepts into uh, something that was um, that already fitted within the world of a child of that age uh, and looked like a traditional toy. And the result is the Cubetto playset, which I have here in front of me, uh, which is a tangible programming interface uh, for children ages three to six, specifically designed for them uh, from the ground up. It's, uh, the idea is to take this uh, little wooden robot uh, on a mission, on his map, uh, around the world. It's completely non uh, um, a completely non-prescriptive game, but the core innovation of what we made are these, uh, these blocks in this interface. These blocks represent or are a procedural programming language, except uh, that it transforms something that is normally text-based and screen-based into something that is uh, tangible and fits the world of a child and um, transforms programming, uh, brings programming to a paradigm that children already understand, playing with blocks, playing with shapes. Uh, each a uh, block is a, an instruction, and children can create sequences of instruction that guide Cubetto from A to B. Um, at the same time, they can tell stories, and they can, uh, they can explore space, they can explore themes through books that we create and uh, through content uh, that we publish uh, that makes the experience fun and engaging for that age group. Uh, we went on Kickstarter. We became the most crowdfunded educational technology invention in Kickstarter history, uh, raising almost $1.6 million. Uh, to date, uh, we started shipping in uh, August actually, uh, we've already shipped 20,000 units to 90 plus countries and um, uh, we have many more in sales uh, that are moving forward um, for this year and next year and the important thing is uh, the, the, the part about uh, the, 90, the 90 countries that were sold to because there's no language, because there's no literacy involved in our product, it's immediately localized and immediately suitable for any child anywhere around the world and in fact the design is based on two very simple principles. The robot is a cube and a smile, um, which is understood by any child anywhere around the world, irrespective of their cultural background or language they grew up speaking in. Uh, we've had, uh, the journey has been amazing. We've won some great awards that have recognized our efforts. Uh, we won a best of the best red dot design award this year, a gold can line for product design. Uh, we've been, uh, we've had the, the, the fortune of exhibiting our product uh, in the MoMA at MIT. We've toured the world uh, with, this, uh, with this cube and it's being used by uh, teachers and children um, and parents uh, all over the world. Uh, we've calculated that roughly um, just over 100,000 uh, children to date uh, have been exposed to computational thinking in early years because of Cubetto. Uh, which has been great. We know that people are starting businesses uh, because of our product and, um, uh, and tour the world introducing children to uh, coding. Our more immediate goal is to have a Cubetto playset in each of the 2.4 million uh, primary school and early uh, education centers around the world and uh, because we believe that that's where it can have the most impact because it's completely physical. You can have uh, multiple children, multiple people uh, engage with the same product and the same product doesn't need, because it doesn't need a connection, it can, uh, it can move around the world. So uh, we'd like to see this, uh, this is one of our goals. Um, 
ultimately, we think we've created something special. We've created something that is uh, that transforms and lowers the barrier um, of uh, entry into uh, learning about uh, technology uh, and about coding as uh, a creative um, as a creative skill. And uh, whether you want to visit our website, send us an email, um, tell your school about it, get one for your kids, we would just like you to uh, join us on this mission of ours, uh, whichever way you can. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Where do you manufacture? China. Any more questions? No. Uh, we just had a very clear campaign. I think you could, uh, we've, we've documented what we've done. Um, the message was very simple. Uh, the, the video was very short, very brief. Uh, we prepared very well. We had all of our channels. Um, I think a lot of people go on Kickstarter thinking, well, that's, you know, that, that's your job done. You just go on it and you publish and you get results. Uh, but the reality is that you need to treat it as you would uh, any other uh, sales channel or any other revenue channel. Uh, just a lot of preparation and a lot of clarity. Uh, we sort of designed our campaign and our campaign page by subtraction. You start with telling everything that you want to say, all of the brilliant things, and then you just kind of shave it off, and it's a, it's a process of elimination until your message is crystal clear. And to anybody who's thinking about bringing a product or a project uh, onto Kickstarter, that's what I would uh, advise. Just less is always more in our case as well. about um, being open and open standard. Can you talk a little bit about that? An open standard, yeah. a global standard. Yeah, a global standard. So uh, I think one of the, I myself, uh, I consider myself an international person. I grew up uh, in, in, in places all over the world. And um, when you have, uh, when you remove language from a product or language barriers, then you have something that is inherently global. So for this being a global standard, it means that you can put it in the hands of a child in, uh, in South America, in the United States, in Japan, in Russia, and they will engage with, uh, uh, with the product and with, with early learning and computational thinking in the same, uh, in the same exact way. So that is, to, to us, that represents a global standard. It doesn't exclude anybody. Um, and it doesn't, it, it, it's not something that's only targeted for uh, a specific uh, demographic. So um, as part of our mission to create educational toys, we want all of our educational toys to have that same exact um, uh, feature of being instantly global and instantly globalized. And I think a testament to that is the number of countries that, have, uh, that we have distributors in, that we have, uh, and, and that we have schools and children using it. Uh, there's no, that, that barrier doesn't exist. And it, it, that mirrors what happens in technology as well. I mean, if you've uh, ever worked with uh, development teams uh, across countries and across continents, you know that a developer in India can understand uh, code and can understand uh, software that's been built in the United States or in Asia or in, uh, or in Europe. So that, that's, uh, if play is uh, a model for reality when we're children, uh, then this is, uh, we wanted this as a, as a model for Learning the program to also reflect that. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Give us one moment and we'll be uh, on with the next uh, pitch.
Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity to share with you what we are currently doing to change the future of online shopping. Uh, my name is Jad. I'm one of the three co-founders of Modular. Uh, Bilal Dushan and myself came together to share the same vision and passion for elevating the digital retail experience. Um, this is typically what uh, most websites are offering. Uh, what we are doing looks like uh, this. Now, I don't know about you, but our team at Modular are pretty excited about this. The latest market research shows that we're not the only one excited about this and that 40% of all consumers desired some form of customization. Um, I'm sure many of you in this room would agree that you'd prefer buying a product that you can virtually interact with before purchasing it. Uh, we are solving one of the main challenges that companies are experiencing, Enab uh, enabling their customers to interact with their products through the development of 3D rendering and mass customization. Uh, we're only at the beginning of this retail revolution, and today I want to take you on a journey in which I will share with you a little bit about Modular's history, where we are right now, and our future projections. Um, Bilal and I actually started on this journey over 10 years ago. At the age of 15, we are already one step ahead of BMW, trying to customize our own parents' cars. Uh, much to their delight, of course. Um, although we've matured a little bit since then, as we now have created our own customizable platform. Um, by bringing our three individual skill sets together, we identify that the, uh, the uh, uh, sorry about that, the industry uh, standard for product offering is image-based. We want to elevate it to be 3D models, to give a more real and interactive online customer experience. If businesses can successfully add a customized process or personal touch that their consumers can, that consumers are seeking, then this will increase customer uh, engagement, which will have four main benefits. Uh, a price premium that companies can control, increase in revenue, uh, accurate business intelligence and insight, and lastly, the one that arguably is the most compelling for the retail industry, is that the increase in customer engagement leads to not only a more satisfied customer, but one that makes 22% more purchases. In fact, um, research from Bain shows that up to 71% of those consumers are willing to pay 28% more if they're able to customize their product. Modular brings all these together through our unique technology platform. Um, the reason retailers are choosing to work with us is because, uh, is because of our exclusive technology, the low cost we can offer it at, and our knowledge and experience in the market. Um, in fact, we acquired eight retailers to work with us before we had even launched our website, which is helping us to improve, uh, which is helping us to establish a strong proof of concept. Um, Sorry about that, I don't know what happened there. All right then. In order to stay one step ahead of the competition, we've allocated resources for research and development and have engaged a global sales organization to help us refine and improve, to help refine and improve our, uh, and upskill our team. Um, we believe and are passionate about the future of online shopping. A future where products and services become the expressions of individuals. If, uh, to, uh, to see them less as groups and more as individuals. A future where companies, uh, uh, where companies understand their, their customers rather than pushing their customers to understand them. What we are looking for and essentially why we are here today is because we are seeking partners who are interested in using our technology and who are as passionate about our vision and want to join us at the forefront of the digital, market, uh, the digital retail experience. Thank you very much.
sorry. Should we connect or is it? No, no. Is it just put it on here and then just speak with the slide? Yeah, it's their slides. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I turn the slide? How do I turn this? Did that chap just walk off with a clicker? The last guy. Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, Artbeep is an innovative uh, marketplace for art and we present the best artists from uh, Southern and Eastern Europe to art lovers worldwide. We combine local uh, expertise with tech to deliver an um, excellent customer experience at a very attractive price. Uh, Okay, there's one slide missing here. Uh, uh, we, we launched approximately two months ago uh, in October uh, 2016. We are present in eight countries, uh, Greece, Armenia, Georgia, uh, Belarus, Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Spain. Uh, we have approximately 100 uh, artists and just over 1,000 artworks. Uh, Art is a large and uh, growing market. There are approximately 70 million um, art buyers uh, worldwide. The online uh, proportion of the market is growing very fast. It was uh, just over 1% uh, three years ago. Now it's uh, uh, more than 5%. Uh, it grew from 820 to 3.2 billion, and uh, it's projected to be 10 billion in 2020. So somebody is going to capture that uh, growth of uh, six billion, and uh, we very much hope um, RB will be one of them. Uh, we uh, have an uh, aging uh, population in developed um, uh, countries, and this is uh, our main customer base, people uh, over 45 years old uh, in a developed uh, uh, country. Uh, I'll pass to Yervan to talk about uh, so um, it's, uh, there's a lot of players in, uh, in the market. There is all the uh, individual galleries, artists, uh, marketplaces, uh, auctions. And you would ask, well, what is the difference with uh, what we are doing? So our focus is, um, is specific regions. We are focusing on southern and eastern Europe. And uh, there is no player that really covers those two regions um, at all. So we, we try to bring and discover and bring the best artists from the region to, to the world uh, art market. And second is uh, that we have local agents in each, in each city where we want to find best artists who really act as their own galleries and they go and um, scout and find uh, the artists and then bring them to our uh, review. We have a network of experts. We review the, uh, the, the artists and then when the art, artwork is sold, the, the, those agents uh, go and help with shipping and logistics on, and all the stuff. So for artists, it's really no hassle to, to sell through the platform, but to focus on what they do best, so selling, um, creating art. Uh, and yeah, this, this, slides, this, uh, this slide shows the, um, the competition, and uh, our strategy is to, to focus from um, end to end, so we, we um, understand UX not only in digital terms, but physical terms as well. So we, we want the user experience to be as smooth as possible from the moment they come to the site, discover something, and then to the moment they receive uh, the artwork which goes through customs and shipping and DHL and all that stuff. So that we try to focus on the, the whole chain. Okay. Uh, 
our marketing strategies, we partner with luxury brands. Um, our latest partnership was um, uh, a show in Mayfair last week uh, together with uh, Bex and Strauss, which was very uh, successful. Uh, we share customer base, so it's beneficial for both parties. Uh, uh, we are uh, very active in certain social media channels. For example, uh, in Instagram, our uh, followers grew from 2,000 to 16,000 just in a matter of uh, two, three months uh, without uh, any uh, a single dollar spent there, all, all organic. And uh, we are um, uh, partnering with various affiliates such as uh, interior designers. Uh, the last affiliate conversation I had was uh, one hour ago uh, with uh, one of the people I, I, I met here at uh, Unbound. Uh, so we are growing quite fast and uh, all this is uh, possible due to the experience team uh, we have. Uh, and. Uh, in terms of next steps, uh, we try to grow while maintaining the cost effectiveness. Uh, we uh, plan to uh, recruit local experts and top artists and build a strong uh, brand uh, by uh, uh, building a leading technology a platform and using some uh, innovative uh, marketing. Um, and um, now it's time for questions. Uh, so who, who has the first question? Okay, we are just around the corner. Uh, please visit us at our booth and uh, we would like to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to um, speak to you a bit much. Wow, it's a bright light. My name is Amrit Virk. I'm the Head of Business Development for Subaka. And I'll take you through our proposition um, to explain exactly what we're here today. So our tagline is moments, for, um, moments of joy for shoppers in store. The founder of the company three years ago essentially was incredibly frustrated uh, working for a FMCG company. In terms of trade marketing spend in store, he was very limited on what he could spend um, and there was no way to actually advertise his products in store. In terms of posters or any kind of shelf covers, um, all of the retail spaces are trying to go paperless and keep a clean aisle policy. So there was no real effective way to advertise in store using the paper method and there certainly wasn't anything that they could do digitally. So he saw a gap in the market in terms of how can we bring digital advertising in store in a fun and engaging way? How can we get insights, engage with customers, and more importantly, bring the fun back into actually shopping in the actual user experience? So introducing the Subaka PlaySpot, um, it is, we have a network of 7,000 PlaySpots in Singapore, China, and now in Australia. We're looking to launch into the UK. These are metal stands that hold a uh, Pipo tablet to which we create gamified content on behalf of the retailer and the brand. So each engagement is in between 50 to 70 seconds long. The customer will um, gain knowledge about new products that are releasing, any promotions in store, and there's always a call to action at the end of each experience. So we, as a, our actual policies, that we leverage the joy of actually playing games. So anybody who's engaged with Pokemon will know the actual um, fascination with gamification at the moment. We create scalable consumer engagement for brands and retailers. Um, I'll take you through a brief example of something that we've just done for Milka. All at the point of sale. When we look at advertising for products in terms of retailers and brands, it's never actually at the point of sale. So it's prior to walking in the store or even worse after you've left the store. So our play spots in the retail spaces, in the various territories that we're in, give a direct call to action, and we see a sales increase of 2.4 times um, generally. So our completed engagements, which I'll invite you to all come and see our stand, um, as I mentioned, are between 50 and 70 seconds each. We call our completed engagements mojos. So these are moments of joy, for sure. When we charge, in terms of how we actually make money in the business model, we give the play spots to the retailer for free, 
and then we charge the brands um, to have space on the, re on the actual play spot um, and also content creation for the gamification of whatever message they want to talk about. Our play spots are Wi-Fi and 4G enabled, so every time someone engages with a consumer branded experience, that data goes straight into a dashboard which we give the, we give the retailer and the brand access to so they can see who's interacting with their brand. Um, as well as doing gamified um, experiences that are branded, we also do um, in-the-store customer surveys. So there is no quicker way to get feedback on your store in-store other than one of our play spots. So as you can see here, this was a snapshot of seven days' worth of data. So on our 7,000 screens, you can see we've reached 4.2 million engagements in territories in Singapore, China, and um, Australia. So for people to ask us, does anyone actually even interact with these screens? The answer is yes. As I mentioned, they're 4G and Wi-Fi enabled, so that gives us a real great vision in terms of what our play spots are doing at any given time. So this is a live map that I took earlier today of what's going on in China. It's a little bit later over there now. And we can drill into the actual detail of territories to see what's going on. So in terms of maintenance, this really helps us as well, because if a play spot isn't feeding up live data, we know exactly where it is, and we'll send a merchandiser to go and sort it out immediately. So as we stand, we're in hundreds of cities, as I mentioned, the territories that we're in. Uh, we have multiple retail partners. So an example would be Coles in Australia, where we're with Tesco China, uh, and also Walmart, Fair Price in Singapore. We're in airports and also cinemas, um, so not just retail spaces. Uh, we have thousands of play spots, as I mentioned, 7,000. It will be 10,000 by the end of December. By the end of next year, we're looking to have 100,000 play spots all over the world. And as we stand now, we have 15 million completed engagements per month over a range of different experiences. So I'll play you a very short clip um, that kind of summarizes what I've just mentioned today and invite you down into the startup village. Xubaka is a platform delivering sustainable and scalable moments of joy through its network of play spots. Our play spots put brands into the hands, hearts and heads of people through playful experiences at the point of purchase. We create moments of joy through the power of play. Play gets people to lean in, not turn away, to get involved, to stay connected and be rewarded for their time and attention. You can't fake play. It's real people, real emotions in real time. And because you can measure play, it delivers actionable data and tangible results at the cash register. Xubaka is play. Any questions? Yes. Um, is there a sort of discount element? Um, so once a user or a consumer completes a game, um, is there an in-store discount which they can then redeem, which is then tracked through the dashboard? Yeah, we were able to offer in-store discounts. So with fair price, uh, with the addition of the play spots, they wanted to offer every 20th uh, customer $10 off their shop that day. So we can work that mechanic. Uh, we also, something interesting we did for Milka is... Um, the head of Mondelez Asia said he had $100 million to launch Milka in Asia, and the number one chocolate in Asia at the moment is Galaxy. I don't know if it's called Dove in Asia. Um, so he said to us, we want to do a gamified experience for four weeks um, on one of your play spots at retail. Um, I want to educate them that Milka is obviously milk, chocolate, and nuts, um, that it's from the Alps. I want to run a competition to win a trip to the Alps. Um, we also want to gather more followers on WeChat, which is essentially WhatsApp, and Weibo, which is Chinese Twitter. So in four weeks, we had 15 million completed Milka games, um, of which obviously they had to pay for, so they're a bit shocked by that. Uh, the actual play spots and the people using them generated so much social media content, no PR agency could have done anything that quick, and then obviously um, a lucky two people got a trip to the Alps. So in terms of introducing a market, we took Milka's brand awareness from 4% to 28% in four weeks in a country like China. So some of the things that we can do with the play spots are outstanding, but not always price driven. Just on the monetization part, uh, the monetization part, yeah. um, 
do you, do you pay the retailers a set fee, um, and then you you charge a premium for the, for the, for the uh, sorry the, the supermarkets yeah. a set fee, and then charge the the brands a uh, a markup and, and then a content. Um, cost. So at the moment what we do is that we offer the play spots completely free to the retailer because they are giving us space in their store and also we need a plug to, um, to obviously power so you them. So don't, they don't charge you? No, no, we refuse to pay. What we do give them is 20% share, um, a voice on the actual platform at any given time for their own promotions and we do all of their content creation for free. So essentially they've got amazing piece of kit for free. Um, to boost sales in store and then the other 80% is what we do in terms of selling that space to brands. Is that all? Please you're invited to come and um, experience the mojo for yourself. Uh, we're in the startup village just on the back wall so yeah it'd be great to see you. Thanks.